Hello. Today I'm going to go through object detection and I'll be using a code pattern that we've made public at github.com slash IBM slash Power AI Vision Object Detection with dashes. Now we'll be using Power AI Vision which is great to show you how to do object detection. It makes a lot of this very easy to do without any code. But We've also made it something interesting for developers by creating a little app that shows you just a simple use case of how you might choose to use object detection. And to me what's really interesting about this is instead of image classification, which we've done before, object detection has different use cases and different opportunities. For example, I'm running Power AI Vision here and I can show you how we can do some testing with object detection. For example, if I run this test, and this is right in Power AI Vision right now, I can click on Run Test and upload an image. I'll come back to training the data set in a bit, but first I want to show you what we're going to be able to do once we have this data set trained. Now the one I'm using here was trained to recognize Coca-Cola bottles, uh, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Coca-Cola. So I just opened up a picture that had several bottles and notice it could recognize those three different types of bottles and it could identify where they were. So this is an important part of computer vision. Now we not only can look at a picture and say is it a dog or not a dog or is it a dog or a cat or a Coke or a Pepsi, but we can identify objects and say that object is a Coke bottle and it is right there and draw a box around it so we can highlight it and find it we can count objects and classify them. Now I've switched to the application that we've put in there for developers. So this looks kind of like a phone, but I'm just running it in the browser in developer mode to make it look like a phone. But if you ran this on your phone and you click choose file, you can use your camera to input an image. If you're running it on your laptop like I am and you click choose file, you pick a file. So here I'm picking a file that's a picture of a bunch of Coke bottles on a shelf. So you can imagine taking your phone to the grocery store and taking a picture. Now you can take inventory and see how many bottles of Coca-Cola are on that shelf. So you see here it returned five entries and since it gave me the exact coordinates I can draw boxes around them. Um, in this example the app is mostly here just to teach so I've used a table to show you what information you need to get back. You're getting back the coordinates. And then down below I show the picture and we've drawn bounding boxes around each bottle with a little label that says what it is. Now if I go and get a different picture, um, remember this is the same model that I used earlier. So I can recognize Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, and Coke Zero. So let's find a picture that has a little variety and let's use that one. So if I click on that one, now I'm just giving back JSON and processing with JavaScript. I see I've got Diet Coke, Coca-Cola, Coke Zero, and I can draw boxes around each one. I can customize the color, the label, and there you have it. You have computer vision. You can find an object and highlight it however you want in your image. And just being able to count them is a, is a big piece of functionality that you don't have with the regular binary classifier. We can take inventory now because we can count them. Now let's take a look at what you need to do to create a data set, train a model, and deploy the model. Now here I am in Power AI Vision and first what you want to do is create a data set. You need to have a good sample of images to train with. So what I'm going to do here is I'll create a new data set. You just click on Add Data Set and one of the options in there is to import from a zip file. So I'll show you in a minute uh, if you do some work and export the zip file you can use that. Now you want to make sure that you're creating it for object detection. You see there's a choice there, image classification or object detection. So I'll just call this one demo and create one for object detection. Uh, that's the button for export as zip file but I'm going to create a new one from some images. So Here's my cloned repo. I've got a data folder. By the way, there's an exported.zip there that you can use if you want to start with an already labeled data set. But just to show you a little bit about how the labeling works, 
I went into this expanded zip file and I'm just going to take two examples because it'll be a little easier for me to show you a few things about how the labeling works. So I'm uploading just these two files and you'll see you have a little image of it there. Um, so I'm going to take that one and you go down a little bit and you can create a tag. So first I'll create a tag for Coca-Cola, create one for Diet Coke, create one for Coke Zero. Now I have my tags. Now let's identify where the Coke, Diet Coke, and Coke Zero are in this image. So I pick one tag and then I'll go draw a bounding box around the image that where that Diet Coke is. So first the Diet Coke and then you pick the next tag and then you draw a box around Coke Zero and you can adjust it a little bit And now let's identify where the Coca-Cola bottle is. Once you get those labeled, you want to click Save. And the color will change to give you a little indicator. Now I'm going to go up and do some labeling on the next image. In this case, they're all Coca-Colas. I just need to label all of them. I'm going to try to get it to recognize this little piece of a Coca-Cola bottle. And what I do for that is sometimes I'll move the box out of the way a little bit. Um, overlapping boxes get a little tricky. Uh, but if I just adjust it a little bit, um, I'll end up getting all the bottles labeled as Coca-Cola bottles. Let's just move that over again. Turn a little more bounding box and put it back. At least that's the way I do it. Your results may vary. But essentially what we have here now is we've got a very small data set, only a couple of pictures. Um, but we, we've labeled a few bottles. And by the way, you can use this pull down to show you which, which files you have remaining. So if you had many files to go through and do this, that helps you show how far along you are in the process. But there's another trick here I want to show you now. So We've got a bunch of bottles labeled and a couple of pictures. We definitely need a bigger sample size. One great way to take care of that, I'll just make sure, I, make sure we're saving our work, but one great way to improve our sample size is to use data augmentation. So these images that we want to process, they might have different coloring, they might be blurry, um, it could even be upside down. So some of these things that we can automatically do, like flip the picture and you know, blur a picture, is handled right here by pressing that button. So this will take our data set where I only use two pictures just to make this obvious. Um, we're going to take that data set of two pictures and create a much larger data set. And the best part is that labeling that we did, that's going to carry over into the new data set. So when I press the augmentation button, it created this new one called Demo-P with some big number after it. Let's go in there and take a look at what, at what you have. You notice the pictures are all modified a little bit. They're, they're blurred, their colors changed, some are upside down. But if I take a look at them, let's see. Let's find a good example. Okay, if I click on one, you see down below the bottles are already labeled. So not only did I increase the size of my data set, which will be great for training, but that part where I identify the specific objects in the picture um, is carried over, so I got a nice head start with that. OK, now I need a deep learning task. So we're going to take this data set that's been labeled, and we're going to use deep learning to train. and First I'll pick, I'll create this task, make sure it's for object detection, give it a name, make sure it's the data set that I intend to train on, and 
then I just go ahead and say build model. So Power AI Vision takes care of all the real hard work here as far as any setup and programming. As long as we have the data organized and labeled and ready to go, we go ahead and create the task and run it. And now we've got deep learning doing the work for us. And the best part about running this on Power AI is with your power systems, you can leverage GPUs to speed up your training. Even with the GPUs, training takes quite a bit of time. Uh, I'm on a shared system here on Super Vessel. So I'm going to use the early stop button so that we can get through the rest of the video. But what I've done is I've recorded some of what the training will look like. I'm going to speed that up a little bit and get us to where we have the deploy and test button that I showed you earlier. So I think the first time I did the training with the smaller Coke bottles data set, it took about 80 minutes to do the training. But uh, we're trying to make the data set a little bit bigger and better and more accurate. So uh, we'll have to balance the accuracy with the training time. So this is the part where you can, so, so you're going to start the training. It'll tell you how much time is left and you're going to want to walk away and let it run. Uh, it shows you this nice graph where you can see the progress as it goes. And when it gets to the end, you'll see that it's completed and there will be a button to deploy and test. So right after the training completes, you can do your deploy and test like I showed you earlier. But also, um, if you want to go back later, you're going to see that you have trained models. You just click on My Trained Models and you'll see all the models you have saved. And if they're not deployed, you have a deploy button right there so you can deploy it from the menu. If I look into my web APIs, I can see I don't have any deployed right now. So I go to my train models, find that Coke bottle model I was using earlier, and click deploy. And in a few seconds, you have that web API up and running and usable. And then you can, again, use the Power AI Vision UI that I showed you and test it right in the UI by uploading pictures. It will, it will do bounding boxes and show you what it finds. You can use the sample app that's in our repo um, to, to run it and play with the code. Or you can also do a, just a curl command because it's, it's a simple rest call. So that wraps things up. I just want to remind you to go to the GitHub repo. It's slash IBM slash Power AI Vision Object Detection. Here you'll get step-by-step -step instruction. So you can use our example data set or build your own, train a model, deploy your REST endpoint, and then you can use our simple little uh, web UI to test it out, and you'll have your own computer vision with object detection.